Welcome back, everyone, to season three of the Welcome to the J podcast. I am your host, Jehan's Madiga, aka Canadian Red Bull. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Field of 68 Media Network. I ask you guys to do that every time before a podcast because it's really important to just get the word out there, uh, get the algorithm rolling in our favor, just so you can be able to listen to and support, you know, my personal podcast. There's also a bunch of different uh, men and women representing their own alma mater like I'm doing today. Uh, this is a Creighton-centric podcast where you can find different podcasts representing different schools uh, from different individuals. So again, like and subscribe to the Field of 68 media, media Network. Let's get straight into it. I have a very special guest to kick off season three of the Welcome to the J podcast. He is the reigning Big East Freshman of the Year, as well as a member of the Big East All-Freshman team. He was named Big East Freshman of the Week six times. He helped a 24-1 Montverde Academy to the Geico High School National Championship as a senior in high school. He also helped Team Canada win bronze medal in the FIBA U19 Basketball Championship, scoring 21 points and 10 assists in that bronze medal game in the summer of 2021. 15 points, 10 assists in his Creighton debut, 22 points, 5 and 5 versus Nebraska, our biggest rival. Member of the Paradise Peak Sham All Tournament, where he floated a bunch of you in the third place game to beat Southern Illinois. Uh, he is the pride of Aurora, Ontario, my fellow Canadian RT Ryan Nemhart, brother. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. How are you holding up? How are you been? I'm feeling good, man. I've just been uh, working with the guys all summer, kind of getting work in, um, getting my individual workouts in, man, trying to get stronger in the weight room. Um, just been working, man, trying to get back uh, to where we were at last year and uh, keep doing better things. We'll stay t- that you're not allowed to you know or say whatever so question what do you feel some of the strengths are of this year's team and why are some of the things that you guys still need to work on to get better you to put the ball down make make plays for others um and just 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 move the ball i mean we, we got a team with a bunch of guys who could shoot pass score whatever it may be so I think we just have a lot of weapons and um something I think we get better at is just um communication um we kind of we kind of losing a couple leaders from last year and um new guys are just gonna have a step up into to new roles so I think that's something that we're working on every single day trying to get better at that was a question I was gonna ask you a little bit later Rob but since you kind of mentioned it right now you are losing contribute contribute contribution sorry from Hawkins last year, uh, Alex O'Connell is someone who really stepped up on the defensive end. Uh, what do you guys have to do to kind of make up for, you know, experience and leadership as well? Um, I think we just have to all do it as a collective. Um, it's a different bunch of guys, a different, a different characters on this team. Um, I don't know if we have guys that are they're just like Hawk the way he talks, but I think we can do it as a collective and um. We're a little younger this year, but guys are going to have to step up into new roles and just uh, get out their comfort box a little bit and uh, do different things. There is so much talent on this year's team. And, you know, I don't envy Coach Mac. I, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes for him to direct who's going to get playing time, who's not, and things of that nature. And with all that talent comes a lot of expectations. You guys are the highest preseason ranking that we've ever had in school history. How are you guys handling such high expectations in the locker room? Um, I think we're doing well with it, man. I think we have a bunch of guys who are just very humble and, and like to work. So I think when you when you have a bunch of guys like that, uh, we don't really focus on the expectations too much. Um, our expectations weren't high last year, and um, we just go in and work every single day. Uh, we're worried about the end goal at the end of the day. Um, this is a great start for us, a great start for the program. Um, but But we're looking forward to doing – doing huge things in March and uh, February so yeah and that's obviously what it's all about uh you got a chance to really you know unfortunately in your case because of your injury but you had a front row seat to what the boys were able to do last year 
Mm-hmm. There were so many injuries stacked up against that team, but uh, you know you were their on court leader, uh, their main ball handler, dishing dimes left, right, and center. You go down. They still managed to make it to a Big East tournament finals appearance against Villanova, where you know they were a couple possessions away from potentially winning that game. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to the NCAA tournament, you win the first game of tough one versus San Diego State. Second round against the eventual champion Kansas. Call mm-hmm. big call goes down, but you guys still push them and give them everything that they could have ever wanted. What are some of the lessons that you learned, you know, being able to watch the guys push through and persevere through a very tough stretch near the end of the season last year? Yeah, um, I think we just, we learned how how we deal with adversity. Um, we were always, we were always a next man up type of team. Um, there, there's many times in the year where guys got hurt. We didn't have Reef at the start of the year. And we just all learned that it's the next man up. We all got trust in, in one through 15 on our team. And I think, I think Coach Mack put, um, Gave us a lot of confidence in that. So we were able to just uh push through tough times and uh figure everything out. And I think I think that's that's only made us closer and made us a, a more experienced group going into this year. It must have been very tough for you because I know how much of a competitor you are. I got a chance to scrimmage with you a little bit this summer. <laughs> and I know when the game's on the line, you always want to have the ball in your hands. How yeah. tough was it for you to just kind of mentally have to deal with the fact that you just couldn't be out there with your team? Yeah, man, that was that was tough, man. It was super tough. It's something I've dreamed about my whole life playing in March. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of when I when I got a chance to step into the to the Madison Square Garden, I was I was kind of in shock. It's kind of like a stage over there, man. It, it's, it's different. different. Yeah, yeah, man. That? There's nothing like it for real. So I mean, it was hard watching that. Um, hard watching the tournament, but at the end of the day, I was just super happy for my guys, and um, I'm looking forward to to getting out there this year, and um getting back on those stages and hopefully getting Mac um, a, a championship in, in the garden. Despite all of that, you were still named Big East Freshman of the Year. Uh, I mean, Coach Mac knows how to recruit guys who don't take, you know, pride into their personal achievements. But, but for you personally, what was it? How what was that feeling for you to be named Big East Freshman of the Year? And it was just a great feeling. Um, like you said, I mean, I'm not really – focused on on my individual goals I'm more I'm more of a team guy but I mean it just shows that all the work you put in all year all the work you put in from when I was a kid um so now it's kind of kind of paid off and um the work's not done yet but it's just a, a great honor to receive that award in a in a in a conference with a bunch of great freshmen uh let alone a, a couple freshmen on our team that I thought could 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 have won it right. so I mean it's just a great honor to be amongst those great players and um get that honor one of those freshmen on your team, uh, he's a sophomore now, obviously, just like you are, was Trey Alexander, who really stepped up big time down the stretch, uh, kind of filling in your shoes, obviously, with you having to go down uh, with free being out the whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, he had to really be the main ball handler. And really set guys up, and you saw the growth court. Um, I'm kind of wondering, I'm sure many fans are, what is that balance between the two of you guys going to look like? Because obviously he took a big time lead. We all know the talent and the kind of player that you are. Uh, how, what's it going to look like when you guys are both at full strength uh, this year? Man, I think it could be really scary. Um, I think you've kind of seen it the last, the last, like before I got injured, me and Trey uh, played like the last six games of the year together last year uh, when Art was out with a little knee injury. And um, mm-hmm. it's just, I think we're just dynamic. Right. Each one of us could, could, get the ball off the rebound and go. Um, so I think it just adds another dynamic to our team where um, I don't really have to have the ball all the time. And I, and I, I like getting off the ball. Um, we can both pass. We can both shoot. We can both score. So, I mean, um, the sky's the limit for, for us too. I think I think you guys are going to be excited with, with what you're getting this year for sure. I would imagine just to add on to your point that with you having the ball in your hands so often at the beginning of the last year that you're going to get a little bit more breathing room to be more of a scorer playmaker, right? For sure, most definitely. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just um, you could get off the ball, you could you could score in different ways. Um, you could make plays for other people in different ways. You don't always have to be off the dribble. You could go off the catch. Um, and, and Mac has a bunch of great sets that he's gonna implement, as you know, um, to get guys shots. So I mean, I, I can't wait. I mentioned in the open some of your success with Canada basketball. Yeah. Uh, most recently, you were in a global jam. Uh, tournament this summer. Uh, 
what has it meant to you uh, to play and represent Team Canada? I've been begging Coach Mac, by the way. Let's let's talk about this because <laughs> I've been begging Mac to recruit more Canadians type in here. It's a shame that it's only been me and you, right. Mac. If you're listening, come on, man, get to Canada. We have a talent <laughs> that could be CU Blue Jays one day. But oh. what has it meant for you to represent Canada when you've had the chance to? Oh, it's been great. I mean. Honestly, for me, there's not much of a better honor than to to put your country's name on your chest and um go overseas and compete. Um, those are some of the best best experiences I've had with basketball in my life. Just going away with a bunch of guys that I've known from from little kids, some of my best friends on those teams. So I mean, it's great experience out there, and um you just build a camaraderie with those guys from a young age. And um I love playing for Canada. Whenever I get the chance, I'll I'll definitely play. I mentioned what you did against Serbia in the third place game, but what people don't know or might not remember was you guys matching with Team USA. Obviously, a whole bunch of uh, draft prospects were on that team, and you guys matched up pretty well, in my opinion. I actually had a chance to watch that game live as it was happening, and you played really well as well. I know you have aspirations at him. So what was it like for you to match up against Team USA and just uh, where do you think Canada needs to go to just kind of, you know, better represent themselves, especially against such a powerhouse? Yeah, um, I mean, that that game was that game was full of talent. Um, There's a bunch of guys that have already been picked, a couple guys on our team that have been picked, um, a couple guys on their team. So, I mean, that was just a game full of talented players. And it was, it was super fun to play. In. Uh, we didn't get a chance to, to win, but um. It is what it is, but uh, I think we just need to we need to keep keep doing what we're doing. As you can see, I think um, I saw something that said we had twenty three guys on NBA rosters uh, from Canada um, a couple of days ago. So I mean, basketball Canada is only growing, and I think I think you're gonna get a chance to see with this next Olympic team what we're really about. So I mean, um, I think I think we're just gonna keep getting better and better, and hopefully one day we could be uh, up there with the powerhouses. And those uh, twenty three. Guys, as you mentioned, once again, Canada breaking its uh, record for, you know, Canadian players on NBA rosters on opening night, uh, which is what you were mentioning just now. Uh, mm -hmm. You talked about the growth in Canada basketball. Where do you attribute that growth uh, to and and where did it all come, come from? Because, like, we're known as a hockey nation, yeah. like a uh, uh, lacrosse nation, even right. more than basketball right. sometimes. So where do you think that all came from? Um, honestly, I think, I think it's a bit from, uh, Canada basketball in terms of their, their youth development. They had, um, they had a junior academy that I was able to participate in when I was like seventh to eighth grade. So you get a bunch of kids that go up to, to Orangeville and, uh, you stay there for the weekend. Um, you get a chance to just build as young kids and start to, to get to know each other and, um, build some type of camaraderie that could carry over to the national teams. And then as well, I think, I think it's a bit of the Raptors. I think, the Raptors, uh, DeMar DeRozan, Kawhi coming, Kyle Lowry, Vince Carter, all those guys have have kind of built a culture that people in Canada are starting to really love basketball. I don't know if I'm going to say as much as hockey, but I think it's right up there at this point. It's starting to get up there with hockey. And um, uh, as that keeps getting better, basketball in Canada is only going to rise. That's the generational gap between you and I because I would mention like Alvin Williams and Vince Carter <laughs> and stuff. You mentioned it. <laughs> to Marcia Rose and Kyle Lowry. That's crazy because like that's how I got into it because Vince Carter was just ridiculous when I was young. I, I vividly remember Sunday afternoon watching those games and then obviously the next generation of that is DeMar DeRozan and then mm. Kawhi coming in and winning a championship. So yeah, for sure. I, I understand where you're coming from when you say the game is growing because the success of the only team there is is helping that as well. Um, who are your favorite Raptors growing up, by the way? Because I'm just, since we're talking about it, I'm interested in hearing what you got to say. Favorite Raptors growing up? Um, man, I'm going to say Jose Calderon is probably one of them. <laughs> I remember Jose Calderon. I used to go to the kids when I, game when I was a kid. Jose Calderon. Um, man, DeMar DeRozan, obviously. Uh <laughs> Chris Bosch, and then obviously Kawhi, man. Kawhi just turned the city up when he came over there. He spent right. one year, got us a little chip. Prey was crazy, so, I mean, got to be Kawhi for sure. Were you able to be at the parade? Yeah, I, I went down there. Um, I definitely did. It was crazy. Oh. 
it was crazy. The streets were packed. Like you really couldn't even go nowhere. I ended up leaving early because it was it was actually too crazy down there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the I was there for Game Six against the Milwaukee Bucks. That put him in the NBA Finals, and I remember, I remember the streets being crazy. Call it, yeah. So I remember that. Best. Well, no, we don't get. <laughs> I'm not quite sure when the next one is right. gonna be. Hey, mm -hmm. so I I talked about you being in the Global Jam this summer, which was your first time participating in like legit five on five meaningful basketball action since the injury. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any like mental blocks or any mental hurdles that you just had to like get yourself over? Because I know we've had multiple guests on the podcast, like Martin Kreppel was one of them who kind of talk about like how injuries could kind of take their toll. In, in his situation, he had multiples of them. This was your first real major right. one. So like things that you have to like remind yourself of like how you play or like things that you can do and like just, you know, clear your mind of like the negativity of having been hurt before. Right. Um. Honestly, there's obviously there's obviously a little bit of doubt just because you haven't played in a little while and it's um your your first time getting back on the court. But for me, honestly, it wasn't it wasn't too much of that. Um, I felt like my accident was kind of a freak accident. Um, I, I've been working to get back all summer just for pretty much that tournament. So I was feeling pretty good going into that tournament. Um, I didn't really play the way I wanted to, but um, it was just a good experience getting back on the floor, um, getting coached by by one of my one of my guys, uh, Nate Mitchell. So, I mean, it was just great to be back on the court playing in front of family and friends. Um, so, yeah, I was happy to get that under my belt and then kind of have have some games under my belt going into the Creighton season. You got, your team has a lot of international basketball experience, obviously, Art, um, Kalk, and then you. Yeah. Uh, what are those games like? And what can you learn from those games and bring back to a setting like a university game? Yeah, um, man, those those European games, those European style games are, are a lot different. FIBA basketball is a lot different. I don't think I don't think people know as much. Um, there's a lot of space over there. Um, you could use your hands a little more on defense. You could be a little more physical over there. Um, and just the way they play the game over there, they're so free flowing. They they pass it really well. They cut really well. They they got to do things that make up for for lack of athleticism sometimes. So I think you could just bring that back to to the game and um to the game over here. Uh, Coach Mac does loves having teams that move the ball um and, and make plays for other make other guys better. So I think that's something that we could take from over there and bring it back home. Uh, Coach Mac is such a genius offensively too. Like he's always there. Uh, like when. Uh, great offensive coaches are spoken about in the college game. Coach Mack is always in a short list of coaches that are mentioned. Uh, you obviously have the keys to the offense. Uh, what have you learned, you know, as far as like Coach Mack is offensive mind that you didn't think you were going to uh, walking in, walking onto campus? Yeah. Um, honestly, He's, he's everyone kind of knows how great of an offensive mind is. His X and O's are, are a little different. Um, you you kind of start seeing them when you get over. He has things that, that pretty much work every time. I remember guys on the team last year telling me, like, this is going to work regardless. Like, it's working pretty much every time. And, like, I'm starting to see it now. I'm telling the freshman this year, like, yeah. Yeah, that, that one's going to work. So, I mean, uh, he's just a, a great basketball mind. And um, I think the one thing that stands out to me about him is just his calmness. Um no matter what's happening in the game, you come to the timeout, you sit down, and he's he's pretty even keel most of the time. Uh, never too high, never too low, and he he gives a a sense of calm that um I think all players need at, at certain times of the game when emotions might be getting high. So I, I love that about him. It's funny that you. mention like the things that work every single time every single time like no matter there's no way like they must have scouted this play right. and it would still like we would run it and it would still work it's still so working. you're getting that crazy. kind of feeling right? it's crazy man it's crazy yeah. 
it, it's actually insanity. Like when you think about it, like we had not to like, I hope you guys don't still name it the same play, but we had Dakota where like Doug would just get an open layup underneath the basket. Like I'm, I'm pr pretty sure Mac changes his calls anyway. So I hope we're not tipping off the opponent right now as I'm talking <laughs> about this, but it's just like, it was unbelievable. It's a simple cross screen. It works every single time. And you know, defenses get confused, but again, that's just kind of like the genius that coach Mac is on the offensive end for sure. 100%. Uh, I, I need to ask you this because we talked about this a little bit. When did basketball set to matter for you? Because I'm sure it wasn't your first and only sport. Like I played hockey first because Canada, you know. So yeah. when did basketball like really like mean something to you where you're just like, hey, I'm pretty good at this and this is what I want to do? Yeah. Um, like you said, man, I played a bunch of sports growing up. I played football, uh, I played soccer. Soccer was really my like second sport. Like I kind of took that a little serious. So I played that until the um I think it was seventh grade. I stopped at the start of eighth grade. Um, and I took a year just to a year, no soccer. And I took a year off of like OBA basketball. Um, and I just OBA yeah, basketball. OBA. <laughs> I took a year off OBA. <laughs> Ontario Basketball <laughs> Association, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> yeah, man, I took I took a year off and I just I trained with my dad um for the whole year. And I think that's when I really started seeing um improvement. And that's when I, I kind of started really taking it. Uh, I think now is a good time as ever to get into some fan questions that we got from Instagram and uh, Twitter. Uh, let's start with the Instagram question first. Friend of the show, Matt DeMarinas, he's got his own podcast. Obviously, I think you've been on it, correct? Yep, 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 I have. Our guy, uh, he's he's trying to get us to go at it, go at it here a little bit. Okay. Uh, his question is, this is a Omaha slash Canada teammate twos and threes to 21 me and our friend Antoine Young versus you and Reef <laughs> who got it so wait it's twos and threes to 21 a 21 yeah two on two man I'm gonna take I'm gonna take me and Reef I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna... obviously I'm gonna say me because yeah. I gotta defend my person <laughs> right right I'm gonna take me and Reef man I can't I can't go against us so I got us and people forget how quick, how shifty Antoine Young wasn't the greatest. Antoine Young was wasn't the greatest three point shooter, and people knew it, but they still couldn't stop him. So I don't know. Reef is an all world defender, though. So that's <laughs> like I, I don't know where it's gonna go. I think I don't know. Does it come down between me and you? You were Big East Freshman of the Year. I was never that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, we know about you, man. We know you got that strap on you. So I mean, <laughs> I, I would. That was what I was gonna say. I would probably stand in the corner and then just like Antoine go to work. The second you help off, I just gotta knock it down. That that's my <laughs> philosophy on what I would do. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good game, man. We might have to make yeah. that to life. So I don't know. I don't know, Twan, Twan, hey, Twan. Have you been in shape, bro? Let's do this this summer. <laughs> <Good enough. laughs> if you have a chance to. Todd's probably got the post game down pat now let's be honest <laughs> <laughs> Matt always trying to you know get me in trouble on these questions uh Devin Lopeman uh I apologize if I butcher your name uh is asking you what are your full expectations for such a talented team this year yeah I mean I mean we're gonna we're confident in, in us over here man I, I'm gonna say final four that's what that's what we want to do who 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 doesn't have expectations of, of doing that, man? I think that's what we all play college basketball for, to to be in right. that. I mean, that's that's what we all want to do. So I mean, those are the that's what we want to do with this team this year. I think we all we all have a collective goal to get there. So I mean, it's gonna be tough, but we have all confidence in us that we could do it. I mean, it is, you know, so much talent. I think four of you guys were named in the, you know, preseason uh all teams or whatever. With Baylor mm -hmm. coming in as honorable mention, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, you and Art being on second team, and then with Big Cost down low being, you know, Biggie's first team. I, like again, I know you. I know the competitor that you are. You yeah. even being named second team is a slight to you. Like I already know. I'm not even gonna get into it. <laughs> yeah. But like, it is a lot of talent, and there is so much expectation. So. You know, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier. You talked about, you know, how you guys are trying not to pay so much attention, but there's got to be a little piece of you that's just kind of like, hey, man, this is the year to get it done. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think everyone thinks this is the year that we get it done. And, and we all, I think we all 
want to do it and we all think we can, especially especially just everything we went through last year. And we we're young still, but we feel like we're a lot more experienced than 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 other guys just because everything we went through, uh, the games we've been through, um, adversity we've been through. So, I mean, I think this is the year. I think it is. Well, Coach Mack used to tell us all the time, by the time Christmas rolls around, you're not a freshman anymore. Like, that's right. just as simple as he, he made it. So, yeah, a, a ton of experience because you guys went through those battles. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it is time to see what next step you can take. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter, we have Kyle Brayman, at Kyle Brayman, asking, which new addition is R2 most excited about and why? You, you know, you got Baylor, you got Big Fred, and a host of shooters coming into the fray. Uh, so the question is to you, who's the new added player on this year's roster that you're really excited to play with and give us a reason why? Yeah, man, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Baylor um, just because he shoots it so well. Um, I love playing with shooters. Um, the way the way Mac does his, his system, too, we kind of ghost a lot of screens. So um, he can really shoot it. He can shoot it from deep he can make plays too so I feel like off the ball with playing with him you get a lot of, of even better open shots so I mean I think that that's a plus um and then I I can't just say one so I'm gonna I'm add Fred in there too man he's a he's a beast he's super young um and I think you guys will, will love what you see from him uh from time to come uh in, in a few years Fred is I mean what a talent just physically he's so imposing he blocked my shot a couple of times when I was practicing with you guys for sure yeah. and then like he's a beast on the offensive board um you know obviously with such talent but not a lot of experience you know he he needs to get that experience under his belt for him to like really you know grow and 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 blossom into the player that he's gonna be uh right. he reminds me of a very coordinated Mo Ogini Mo don't kill me for this I love you bro <laughs> But that's what he reminds me of for sure. Uh, we have Andy Davis asking a very critical question here. He's saying the national championship game is on a Monday. So should we just wait for the weekend to have a parade or should we just do it midweek? He's saying we're winning the whole thing. Yeah, I say I have think, high aspirations for their team. Yeah, yeah. I say we do it midweek, man. We gotta we gotta get a party on the mall. <laughs> so if that happened, we gotta have a party on the mall. I don't know. We gotta do something crazy. Maybe right for sure i think it would be is all camp cream i know we take our academic seriously but if the boys win the whole thing cancel all the classes we're on the yeah. ball with it i'm flying hey, back to austria for it i promise you that <laughs> for sure you might have to cancel class for a week i don't know <laughs> right <laughs> we'll figure it out when we get there yeah. uh you guys play on christmas and this is a uh, creighton wired asking the questions the question i'm sorry are the players excited to play on christmas day yeah, um, super excited. Um, Coach Matt kind of asked us if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to play on Christmas, and um, a bunch of us said, yeah. Um, I think we'll get our families down here, and I think it'll just be electric. Um, a lot of people in Omaha won't really have nothing to do at, like, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, as as really nobody does anything at that time other than watch NBA games, or at least that's what I do. So, I mean, I think it would be crazy in the CHI. We'll have a good atmosphere in there, and – um. It's just a big time game on Christmas. A lot of people tuned in and um, we're super excited for that. I always look forward to the NBA slate of games on Christmas for sure. I know you're going to be a little bit bummed out that you're going to be missing one, but you're also going to be participating in one, which I think is, you know, pretty cool. And I, I don't remember the last time that Creighton played on Christmas, if we ever did. I'm sure uh, Rob Anderson could tweet at us after this, the last yeah. time that the Creighton team did. But no, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's, kind of a neat and just to kind of be obviously in Omaha we are the main show when it comes to you know the winter time so mm -hmm. uh yeah I, I think it's going to be I'm actually kind of jealous of you guys it's going to be a super neat atmosphere to be able to play in sure. uh our last fan question from Twitter uh from birds by design uh what team are you looking forward to playing the most in the Big East this year Big East um I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna say Xavier. Either Xavier and then obviously you got Villanova. It's always a big time matchup. But I'm gonna say Xavier. We we didn't we didn't get a chance to beat them last year. We're 0 2 versus them. Um so I mean their building is is a great building to play in. I'm super excited to play those guys, hopefully pay them back a little bit. You had that crazy 
dunk against yeah. DePaul last year. I, I, as soon as I said that, your face lit up. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, so I was in Poland last year. I was watching that game. And, you know, I had to be up at like 4 a.m. to watch you guys play. Yeah. It was maybe like 4.45 a.m. And I saw you do that. And I yelled. Like, I'm sure my neighbors hated me. But like, <laughs> that happened like a few times with whenever you guys had a spectacular play. Yeah. I didn't know you had something like that in you. I played with you this summer a little bit, so I've seen a little bit more of it. Yeah. But that really woke Creighton fans up to like your athleticism and your ability to get up there. Mm-hmm. So are we in store for more of the same this year or what? Yeah, for sure. We're gonna, I'm going to have a couple more dunks this year, hopefully, man. I think, <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to have a couple more this year. I got my confidence up a little, so for sure. <laughs> Well, there was the one that you had this summer in practice. I'm not going to name who ended up on the wrong end of it. Yeah, it, man. It, it leaked out. That was it on any – I don't know who did that, but it leaked out. And the fans are just yeah. kind of itching to see because more often than not, you're one of the shorter guys on the court. Just to see you, like, fly up there with the big boys, like, that, it's pretty impressive. I'm not going to like us. I only have one dunk-ish, if we could call it that, my senior year. I barely mm-hmm. rim grazed it. So, so I don't know to see you do that. I was just, I'm like, yeah, Canadians are flying, baby. Let's go. <laughs> so, one on one versus Andrew, who's winning? Me. <laughs> <laughs> me, man. It's a simple answer. He going to say no that. Huh? Nah, it's me, man. It's a simple answer. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned that your brother, Andrew, is on the Indiana Pacers right now, one of the 23 Canadians suiting up on NBA, uh, or in the NBA this year, I should say. Obviously, mm. that's your end goal as well. But how proud of you, uh, how proud are you, sorry, of your older brother being the little brother that, you know, uh, I don't know if he's been like a role model for you. Like mm. for me, my older brother was everything when it comes to basketball. But how cool is it to see your brother shoot up? Man, it's super, it's super cool, man. I, I just, I've been with him through it all. So I've seen, I've seen all the work he's put in um I've seen everything he's done with the game how smart he is with the game um that's that's big bro to me man he's a role model to me I uh, always wanted to kind of be like him when I was younger so I'm just super excited to see his dreams come come true and um I think he's having a great time out there hooping um and, and I, I wish him the best for sure we're obviously all happy for you and your family because that is a big step for the entire family to see somebody, a member of the family, make it to the NBA. But Korean fans are just never going to forget what he did to us in the Sweet 16. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> the <laughs> consolation prize was that we got you to come to campus the following sure. year, right? So, so. I think as an end. to talk and, 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 spot, but you got to give me a definitive answer. Your food spot in Omaha. Man. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I don't know if you know this spot. You probably do. Um, I'm going to go with Cheeseburgers. It's in, like, the Blackstone District. I don't know. Their cheeseburgers be going crazy. But I, oh, yeah. You know what? I actually went there with John McHugh this summer. We had a little bit yeah, of a lunch yeah. date. McHugh and I went out there. Yeah, no, that spot is fine and underrated, too. Very underrated. They got good fries. They got, they, got yeah. good, they got good, like, chicken fingers, too. It's fire. I got the, uh, what was it, the corn dog with my burger, too. Cornell yeah. was fire. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> I'm gonna lie. Hey, that's yeah. a good spot. Yeah. And I think that's the first time anybody said that because you know Blackstone is kind of uh a little bit newer, especially like some of those like hole in the wall places, let's call it. Like so cheeseburgers is is dope for sure. Yeah. Um favorite place to play in the big east. Favorite place to play. Obviously, uh CHI doesn't count, obviously. Like I'm sure we would all say our home court, but yeah. On the road, favorite place to play? Um, Xavier, probably. Small, like 12,000 people. They got their DJ was tough in there. He's going crazy before the game. Um, the fans was pretty good in there. And then I'm going to say Villanova, too. They're small. <laughs> I, like, I like Villanova's campus gym. The DJ is the reason why? Yeah, the DJ, the DJ was going crazy before the game, man. He's going crazy. 
He's going crazy. <laughs> Do you remember when he was playing? No, I don't, but I know I was I was getting in that mode for <laughs> sure. Right. Bro, as basketball players, that's real though. Like that that pregame DJ is everything. I remember we used to have our old little like mix that we gave at some point because we're just like, hey, we need to get like some going on in here. Bet. But yeah, it, it needs to happen. Since you're Canadian, I, like I'm just gonna assume Drake is your favorite artist. Yeah, so yeah, I need yeah. to ask you, <laughs> yeah, you see that? I need to ask you your favorite Drake song. Favorite Drake song, Do Not Disturb. Drake always goes crazy on the last track. He always goes yeah. crazy on the last track on every album. I'm gonna go do not disturb. I'm gonna go Western Row Flows. Yeah, of course. I I had a feeling that one's a little more personal for you. Uh yeah. how annoying, by the way, is it how often do people ask you if you're from Toronto? Because like I'm from Ottawa, so for me that's like hella annoying. Like as soon as I mention I'm Canadian, that's the first question people ask me how far away from Toronto am I. But yeah. does it happen to you? you and and do you find that frustrating um yeah i just yeah i mean it, people always think you're from toronto if you're from canada um so yeah i mean it's whatever i don't really care too much but i feel i just tell people yeah i'm from toronto because they're not gonna know any other spot in in canada so i'm just like yeah toronto. Right. yeah yeah i know when i mentioned aurora in your intro a lot of people are gonna tweet at me like isn't he from toronto like i already know right, like i'm right. already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. That's all that I got for you. Again, Ryan Emhart, first guest on season three of the Welcome to the J podcast, bro. I appreciate you so much. Uh, obviously, good health and good luck uh, this year. Is there any last words that you want to say to Crane fans? Man, I'm just looking forward to the season, man. You guys got to come uh, pack out the CHI. It's going to be a fun one for sure. Hell yeah. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, Man, man, I appreciate you so much. This has been my guest, Ryan Nemhard, a.k.a. R2. Uh, I'm your host, Jahan Staniga. This has been another episode of the Welcome to the J Podcast, our first of season three. A very special guest. The only time you'll ever get the two Canadians to suit up for the boys in a room together, in a virtual room together, <laughs> let's say. Ryan, thank you so much, bro. Appreciate you. Stay healthy out there. Yes, sir. Good luck this year.